You see, the church is not an event company that plans every Sunday service. Uh, no. Event company put a good show. But I can tell you, it's family. After the show is over, it's family that is left. When the wedding celebration is over, <laughs> when all the lights are gone, then we stay under the moon and under the place, clearing the debts. <laughs> and we are looking out for one another. Community is the container that sustains revival, not meetings. Family is the container that hosts and warehouse revival to its maximum extent. No wonder when Jesus came, the Messiah, he needed people to be around him. It is an anomaly for you to be a believer and a lone ranger. You see, when I heard those testimonies, I was just so glad because two things reassures me again for this year. Two of them, the main thing in their testimony that's consistent is that God provides. He provides. And this year, both the statistics is saying it. By now, we should be enjoying in our nation because um, the people that supply gas to Europe, they are not supplying again. There's war. We should have been the one supplying. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but you see, but despite all this, God is good and he will still provide for you. Let them take it anyway. Let the economies of this world, the kingdom of this world collapse. You have a kingdom that is everlasting. You have eternal life that is everlasting. Key into that. And it may not look like it now, but I can tell you it is. It brings me to what I want to speak on this morning. We're still on our series, Secured by Heaven. As we're about to enter this year, the Lord told me, he said, for you to survive this year, you have to, the way forward is community. The way forward is community. And I can tell you, one of the things that hurt you so bad is community. Is that not true? Ah, huh? Yes. You know why you are hot? The extent to which you love is the extent to which you'll be hot. And if you say you won't love again, you are created for love. The deeper the love, the deeper the cut. I want you to listen to that message. Play it over and over again. Imbibe it. All the promises of God are yes and amen. But I want to tell you that if you read the book of Isaiah, it's for a nation. That means for a people. You see, we cannot come into dominion. You know, we are only talking about dominion mandate. Dominion mandate. Dominion mandate. I can't come into dominion without my wife. He created them male and female and he said, let them, not let him, not let her. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. We cannot move in dominion as a church when we are not in one accord. I know you want to harm her alone. I know you want to make it alone. That is not in the kingdom. You know, when I looked at the life of Jesus, I was wondering, people abandoned you. When you resurrected, you were looking for them. How many of you will look for them? You will sing song. Go your way, I go my way. I have no time to talk to you. Talking to you is a wasting of time. You are the one that, is, you are the one that ended that one. But let's look at what we have to do here today. I, I just sang that song so that you can be happy. Some of you, are, your, your face are not so good. But it's okay. Second Corinthians. <laughs> 1 verse 20. The Bible says, For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. 1 Peter, 2 Peter 1 4. By which 
have been given to us, exceeding great and precious promises, that through this you may be partakers of the divine nature. You may be partakers. Apostle Paul is writing to a people. 2 Corinthians is writing to a people. That through this you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Today I want to talk about secured on God's promises. All the promises of God is for us to say yes and amen. Do you know why God wants to bless me? Do you know why God wants to release things to me? Because it's not to bless me, but I will be a blessing first of all to those in the body of Christ. First of all. Why do I stand and, 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 and get the promises of God? Thank God God has given you a child, but that child is not for only you. My breakthrough, my favor, my, mm, it's not in this kingdom. I was talking, we were talking to our son yesterday and we said, I was trying to explain to him John 3.16 and 1 John 3.16. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall have eternal life. Shall not perish, but have eternal life. But let me tell you, First John 3, 16, No greater love than this, than for a man to lay down his life for his brother. Jesus has laid down his life for you. You also need to lay down your life. Not only for your son or your daughter or your husband. I was talking to some teenagers recently. And I tell them, how many of you love Nigeria? They raise up their hands, some of them. How many of you, if you get the visa to move? Ah, uh, the same people that raise their hand. <laughs> if you love something and you cannot die for that th thing, you don't have love. <laughs> the test of your love is the willingness to die. Some of you are shocked now. <laughs> How many of you can die for this country? Huh? He says, the country died for me. <laughs> but really, that's not where I'm going to today. I'm talking about God's promises. And His promises are not for only you. They are for the, the body of Christ. Every time you look at John 17, God was, Jesus was praying for the church. That they will be one. Just as you and I are one. If Jesus prayed for it, that means that he saw disunity. And if Jesus prayed for it and all of Jesus' prayers had been answered, that prayer would still be answered. A promise is a commitment to give or not to give something. That's a promise. It's a commitment to give or not to give something. And you must understand that promises are important because being uncertain in any situation is a faith killer. Promises are very important because being uncertain in any situation is a faith killer. Listen, are you uncertain about your situation right now? We don't know what will happen. No. I need to secure my life, anchor my life. You see, when Jesus called, when the Bible calls us sheep, why? I heard somebody said that he doesn't believe the Bible because it's not a sheep because sheep are dumb animals. And to, a, to, 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 the, to, the, to the to the reasoning of man, that is a very good thinking. But the Bible says that you can only enter the kingdom as a child. Are children dumb? Do you know that it's only people like you that keep malice? You see two children fighting about something. The next minute they have reconciled. Are they not dumb? Why does God call us sheep? Because he wants to be our defense. He wants to be the one that will lead you because you don't know the way. The goats that know the way, where are they now? They are stubborn. They don't want to follow anything. But well, you must understand that the promises of God is for me to say yes and amen. I want to show you about seven promises that many of you will need. And I want us to stand as a family. As a family. Because you see, what is your breakthrough 
can also be somebody's breakthrough. Because when you have received a breakthrough in a family, you lift up your head and say, who still needs this breakthrough? There are many of you here, you are pioneers. You know what's a pioneer? You have the pioneering spirit, which means that you don't have any model you look up to. I'm sure you don't. There are many of you here, you are pioneers. That means that you are the one to activate others. Why you yourself? It's like you are a catalyst. You look at left and right, you will not see anything. I remember those days when I got married to my wife. She was pastoring a church. And there was so much, let's say, heated fellowship. And I wanted to know what's going on. I looked around everywhere. I wanted to see a man who was married to a pastor of a church, not a woman who is doing internary ministry. Doing itinerary ministry, that means that you can set up a meeting, you create living your dreams, then you close it, you can go. After one month again, you set up one. We're, not, we're talking about a church that means consistently. I looked everywhere, I scanned everywhere, the whole of Nigeria. I scanned everywhere, I didn't see. And God showed me, he said, I will use you as a template. You can look at them and say, my mates are not here. Why did God bring you to be? So that people can look up to you and become your mate. And you now become a rock for others to climb. And I can tell you, no doubt, God never forgets the father of a movement. Scriptures never forget. The first promise. The promise on health and healing. I had to put this because I saw this come alive in my wife. That's why no matter what is going on in your life, read the Bible. You know, sometimes when you're reading the Bible, it doesn't make sense. Listen to messages and be in church. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through. No matter what you're going through. It's one word. It's one word. I mean, it, the, the word may not even come from the person preaching. It may come from somebody at the door. I remember Pastor Peter in this family. Come, came to church so that the next minute he go and commit suicide. But he walked through the door, he saw Pastor Enoma, who was then the head usher. Pastor Enoma greeted him with excitement. He has never been welcomed like that in his life. He came outside the door again, came in again, so that he could feel that warmth. In First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, may, that we, having died to sin, might live for its righteousness. For by whose stripes you were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. But Apostle Peter was referring to Isaiah 53. By his stripes we are healed. He was repeating it to them. Apostle Peter was writing to the church in Rome. Telling the group of them that he bore your sins, so you are healed. Not that you are going to be healed. More than 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price for your healing. Are you sick in your body? That's reality. But the ultimate reality is that you are healed. That's the ultimate reality. You know, sometimes we as Pentecostals say, how are you? Say, I'm strong. Meanwhile, you are sick. Because you don't want to. Acknowledging the fact is not a faith killer. But there's a higher dimension you must hold on to. It's a higher truth. In Psalm 102, verse 2 and 3, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? All, not some. All your diseases. All your diseases. He heals them all. Not one, not two, not three. He heals them. Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. You see, it's believed that, and sometimes it's some, of, some, some of the things you did was what brought sickness to you. In Isaiah 53, he dealt with three types of sin. He dealt with iniquity, he dealt with sin, and he dealt with transgression. In one swap, the blood of Jesus dealt with them. If it was infirmity that brought it, or if it was uh, iniquity that brought it, he has forgiven it. So the sickness must go. 
I remember those days when, you know, the funniest thing is that I didn't see my wife's report until our child was born. It's not because I, I was against, uh, I don't like medicine because sometimes we preach the other extreme. You know, sometimes it's good to come to a crusade or come to a meeting like this, but not everybody will come to a meeting like this. They are sick Muslims. And God loves them too. I hope you know that. I know you don't like them, but God loves them. So you must love what God loves. Or who God loves. <laughs> Those ones cannot come for a crusade, but they need people who will develop cure. That will take care of millions. God is not wish, willing that somebody else, some people will perish. People will perish but that they will live long enough to be able to encounter his love and they will come to the saving knowledge of God. You see, sometimes when I look at, I read the Bible and I look at the way we behave, it doesn't tally sometimes. Imagine a man that was healed of sickness. As he was going, Naaman, he told Elisha, Elisha, please, oh, there's something I must beg you. <laughs> He's trying to tell El Elijah, I'm going to see you. Know. <laughs> he said, Elijah, Elijah, you know, my, 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 my ogre will enter the temple of Ramon. And I'm the one holding his hand. When I enter with him, I will still bow. That's the only thing I'm just asking you for. As a Pentecostal pastor, what will you say? Resign, resign. <laughs> Elijah said, go in peace. He has already repented in his heart. How we do it is left for him. But, you see, my wife gathered messages those days because of what they said is eternal sinecure and block tubes. And she was listening to healing messages, scriptures, healing messages, healing messages, healing messages, healing messages. And how the baby came, I don't know. But I remember that she one time, then we're sitting here, we had a 40... I think it was 40 days or 30 days. <laughs> that time it was powerful. 30 days faster than pre-January. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so as she came, I said, I give her a prophetic word that by this time, the end for the end of this year, she will get she, she will give back. That was January. And we're fasting. Hallelujah. Listen, there is no problem you have that God has not made provision for it. The only thing is that we don't know where the promise is. That's why I want you to go into the book. And you see, let me tell you, promise is different from a parable. The problem is that most times we convert parable to a promise. And we use it to pray. And also sometimes you read uh, Psalms. You will read the depressive prayer of David break their teeth, use, grav use gravity to, to, to scatter their teeth. <laughs> then you carry that prayer. Oh Lord, scatter their teeth with gravity. Stone them. Stone them. No, no. It's somebody's depression. Somebody's own. It's not the heart of God. Now hear me. The Bible is not a static revelation of God. You know, sometimes when people want to this, they say, is this, the Bible is the word of God. You say, yes. It's the word of God. Yes. Oh, yeah, explain this one. Now, the Bible or scripture is the inspired word of God, not dictated by him. So, the Bible, the scripture from Genesis to Jesus is a progressive revelation of who God is until the life of Jesus. In Jesus, you will see the express manifestation of the heart of God. And what is the heart of God? It's called the Messiah's disposition. When you are interpreting scripture, is he merciful? Is he faithful? Is he kind? Is he lovely? I don't know this God. He loves anybody. If it's me, I have a group. 
And so she gathered the healing. So are you sick in your body? You come to a crusade, you get healed. You drink medicine, sometimes it goes. But there are sometimes it remains. There's a, song, there's a hymn, Standing on the Promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, standing on the promise. You know what? Let's stop standing and stand kneeling. On the promise. We die here. We kneel on the promises of God. I remember going to the, they are going to do, then they were going to do HSG test on my wife then. Oh, when I stood in the place they were doing with the pain, I said, my wife, you can't do this again. You know, and I said, the worst that comes to the worst is that we won't have a child, Abby. It's okay. <laughs> Who will I run to? That's the worst. But she stood on the promises. And when the doctor was saying here and giving the testimony, I remember a doctor then. He said it is double jeopardy. Number two promise. The promise is on finances. Before I go here, are you sick in your body? Stand on the promise. He said, how long? I don't know. But after doing all to stand. Stand. Ogun has no, no cure. Apart from God, there is no salvation. They can promise you temporary relief. But they don't have the solution. And you see, sometimes, you pray like this, God will just answer, pa! But there are other times, He wants to give you what you are asking for. But right now, you don't have the character to warehouse it. Promises on finances. You know, the reason why sometimes we steal is because of this. You see, how much will I'm earning 50,000 naira? How will I save and save and save? Build a house, buy a car, buy this thing. Why are you thinking about your future? Are you the owner of the future? One of the things I know is that he brought me here. I didn't pray to come. So how will feed me? One day we were walking around the gulf and I saw a mango on the tree. And birds have already eaten it. I said, so you kept food for birds. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Those birds don't even pray. I've not seen a congregation of bear gardens say we are believing God for provision. <laughs> in Deuteronomy 8, 17 and 18, the word of God says, Then you say in your heart, My power and might of my hand has given me this wealth. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. That he may establish his coming and which he swore to your fathers in this day. God will give you power to make wealth. I want you to understand that you will not be sick. God will give you the power to make wealth. The ability, the ideas, the giftings, they are already in you. You will make it. In Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, is the Bible says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. For every promise, there is a premise. For every promise, there is a premise. Some people believe that when you tell your son, I will buy you so, so, so if you do your assignment. The premise is that when you do your assignment, you collect. 
it is irresponsible, it's irresponsibility for us to leave everything to God. He said, God said, I go better, I go better. He has said you will be better, but he cannot wake you up. He has declared that promise. So when it comes to finances, there's a premise. Even to your health, there's a premise. I thank God that God wants to heal your lung cancer, but please stop smoking. My brother, stop smoking. Stop, stop doing it. Stop it. Because not only healing is divine restorative health system. We were never created to be sick. But the fall. So everything has a premise. He said, when you honor me with the first fruit of your increase, your bands will flow. In Matthew 6, 8, 38, the Bible says, Jesus says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together and running over. We'll be putting you on bosom for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Apostle Paul alluded to this also. In Ephesians 1, 3, blessed be the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Apostle Paul said, no, don't, don't, God is not mocked. For whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. With which measure you sow, that's the same measure that will be given to you. Apostle Paul writing to the church in Philippi, and many of us stand on that promise, but that promise is on a premise. He said, you, the church in Philippi, in Philippi, because as a prisoner, you know what will happen? Is that in prison, as a prisoner of Rome that time, they don't feed you. You feed yourself. They still have us arrest in, in, in Italy today. You feed yourself. So if you don't have money, you can die of starvation. In fact, they even want you to die. The distance from Philippi to Rome was so long that they said, you church in Philippi, you sent me provision over and over again. And he now went on to say, and my God, he didn't say God, though. My God. Shall supply all. It was not only an individual that supplied this need. It was a community. And that's why Dio should ask Larry, do you give your tithe? Oh, I know you don't. <laughs> For whatsoever Dio sows is what Larry will reap. Oh, you don't understand. There's an individual blessing that comes in Titan. But there's a communal blessing that comes when the whole body aligns. Don't be in the church church with me if you don't want me to enter your life and I don't want you to enter my life. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Because that's not church. That's progressive union. Even progressive union do more. Progressing now, they will come and ask you, have you paid? I, don't they ask? <laughs> they ask. In church, say, eh, eh, why are they asking me? It's me and my God. No. There's no me and my personal Lord and Savior. It's our Father. My brother, you give that. Oh yeah, show me the evidence. He said, ah, ah, they are monitoring me. Yes. You yourself monitor me. You, you see, that's why we are not maturing. Because nobody is looking up to you. You are not looking up to anybody. Yeah. As a mother, if your children are there, you behave. Because you don't want them to know some bad behavior you have. Sooner or later, that bad behavior will start leaving you. You see, promises on finances are on premise. And I can show you, God is delighted to give you one as a child. But also wants to give you as you obey his commands. Listen, there are two covenants. And they are, they, 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 they are not fighting one another. They are not fighting one another. There's the Abraham, Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant, it did not even do anything for him to enter. It's about forgiveness. When they were leaving the Egypt, it's not, most of them have idols in their household. 
as they were leaving Egypt. That, that Passover night, there was idol in their house because they took it with them. <laughs> there was a, so, Passover was not about uh, 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 rending your heart. It was about the mercy of God. That if you put blood on your house, it will pass over you. So, it was about forgiveness. As they were entering, the, as they came to Mount Sinai, God began to, if you look, the book of Exodus was about a marriage covenant. Was about marriage covenant where you will say laka, my my treasured possession. Then there's segula, there's ketuba. It was a five step marriage of of the Jewish culture. He didn't marry them because they have they were clean. He said, now that I have loved you and I have forgiven you. This is a covenant will work if you want to walk in the blessing and not go to bondage. So Abrahamic covenant is about forgiveness. Mosaic covenant is about walking in the blessings of God. Obeying it. Because sometimes grace tends to do that one away. No. Listen, you can be forgiven and not be a blessed person. And you can be blessed because you obeyed it and not be forgiven and you still end up in hell. You can be forgiven and not obeying the, obeying the, 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 the covenant. Huh? You will be forgiven, but you will bring hell anywhere you enter. Sorry. But I want you to walk into, you are forgiving people who obey God. Who want to please him. So when he tells you, this is what I want you to do, do it. It's not for your bad. When he was giving them the Ten Commandments, you, you told the, the bunch of states, no, those are rules. Don't put rules on me. They were happy. When he said, you, you get to rest for one day. For the number of years they were slaves, they have never rested for one day. When he says, don't commit adultery. In other words, don't sleep with each other's wives. Eh? Because in Egypt, an Egyptian can call one man from another house and one man from another house say, for their entertainment, sleep with each other. Oh, is it that? How can your son respect you when two of you are slaves? <laughs> So when he said, honor your father and mother, so the, the father, oh, they can, my children can honor me again. What are the promise? The third promise is the promise of protection. Lift up your hands, say, I'm protected. Say loud and clear, say, I'm protected. I'm protected. Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8. As the COVID the last Sunday before we shut down and we are not meeting. In fact, in, in, in Edo State, they didn't shut down service completely. They just reduced it to 20. But thank God that time we were renovating the house. So we were <laughs> 20 people were just enough to enter the prayer room. <laughs> Psalm 121 was a song with Psalm, one, nine, one, with Psalm 91. Put together as a song by the late prophet Ogbonwa. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. He's asking, does my help come from there? No, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will never slumber. Behold, he who keeps his rest shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun, the sun shall not strike you by day nor, by na- nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. From this day forth and even forevermore. <laughs> you see, the promise hit you. In Psalm 46 verse 1, it says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. Psalm 91 was not written by David. It was written by Moses. Why would he write it? He was telling them, all this plague you are seeing that is attacking the Egyptians will not come near you. Will not come near you. They say it's banditry. It will not come near you. They say terrorism, it will not come near you. The only thing is that all of us should move as one and stand on the promises. We sang that song. We loved, we took the song. Everybody, the song went viral. 
And people were singing the song. And people, as they heard the song, it hits them in their spirit that God will keep them. It's a protection of God. Listen, there is no economy, no nation that can protect you. None. None. What will come, will come. Natural disasters are there. People attacking you. Stray bullets. Anything can come. You can even stay in your house and say you are not going nowhere. Trail like bar. People have died on their bed. Why? It's the protection of God. The place you will be for protection in His presence. And it can be in the front of a war, in, in the war front. It can also be in your bedroom. The protection. So when they are telling you there's going to, uh, uh, the, there's going to be a problem, stand on the promises. I'm going to my office and nothing will come near me. And nothing will come near you. As you begin to speak it, because it's either you are speaking faith or you are speaking fear. You are speaking faith. Sometimes God will tell you, don't go to that place now. That is his voice. His voice is there. Don't turn it to a rule and tell everybody, God told me not to go, so you should not go. And sometimes he will tell you, now nah, start going. But if you are not careful, the last word becomes your, your current command. And you are no longer looking at current command. Lift up your voice and declare, I shall not die. Declare it, I will live. To declare, the, the, to declare the, 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 the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living. It will, be, it will also be in my household. And everyone connected to me. Shout a big amen. There is a promise of prom, um, um, promise on promotion. Promises on promotion. Promises on promotion. This will guard your heart so that you don't start playing office politics. And start... And start backbiting everybody. Trying to get to the heart of the influencers. You know, there are so many, so many worldly ways that people use this day. Worldly ways. Worldly ways. And you will get the promotion, but unto what? Who will you become? David was ordained king at the age of 18. He ran for another 13 years. Another 14. He was running from the person who was already dethroned. Had two opportunity to kill the person and become king. He said no. In Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. For exhortation comes neither from the east nor from the west. Nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exhausts another. He puts down one and exhausts another. There was a time Babylon was the hegemon. Later, I became patient. It's going round and round. It became Rome. It became you, it, Great Britain. It's the one that exhorts. It's the one that puts down. Don't exhort yourself. James called it selfish ambition. Selfish ambition. Today, you are depressed because there's no more likes on your charts anymore, on your post. I remember somebody left church in one of our locations. He said, because during our birthday, nobody put up our picture. All kinds of things. James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Humility is the, is the, is the, is the, is the doorway to promotion. The way forward for promotion is humility. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. It's a promise. Exhortation does not come from me doing it. I will do my best. I will not do a sloppy job. But my promotion does not come from my boss. My promotion comes from the Lord. There are, there are policies now that people there in your office that want to put you down, are they the ones that put themselves there? Huh? And one policy can remove them tomorrow. It can. It says, let us see your business will crumble. Are you the one that gave me the business? You're not. Let them gossip you. And the more they talk about you, the more people say, I want to see that person. Before you know, they become your advertisers. In Isaiah 40, verse 30 to 31, even the young shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. 
Keep on waiting. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not, fa- and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. They shall walk. He said, when you wait up upon the Lord, he's the one that will lift you up. Wait on him. Begin to de- just say, I, 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 will, I will live to declare his word. I will be promoted. I will do my job. He said, oh, if I don't sleep with you, I, you won't get promoted. He said, sir, I am sorry. I cannot do it. But if it's about promotion, it's okay. You see, many of us don't want to suffer for our faith. You know, we don't like that. You think that Christianity is, 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 is sweet, sweet. It's sweet. It's sweet. Sometimes it's bitter. Uh, <laughs> he said, I'm serving God, I'm, I'm suffering. Jesus suffered on the cross. <laughs> he carried his cross. <laughs> And you think you will not carry. You will carry, my brother. Because there are some things that are against the values of your kingdom. And they want you to do it. And you are telling, I cannot do it. He said, but we will sack you. It's okay. Don't come out with one theology if you can't beat them. Then you now come out with another one that says, the people of this world are indeed in their generation wiser. Why can't we be wiser? Listen, is he talking about you? No, that's not a promise. It's a lesson. Let's be careful what's a promise and what's a parable and what's a lesson. The promise of protection is there. You'll be protected. And you see, death is not your final analysis. The reason why you will do the things you are not supposed to, you are afraid of, of, of not having, you are afraid of dying, you are afraid. Meanwhile, Apostle Paul said to die. I'm not saying you are going to die tomorrow. But I can tell you the fear of not having, the fear of death, the fear of so many things will make you do the things against the commands of God. So hold on to his promise. Hold on to his promise. Hold on to his promise. I won't take bribe. I won't cheat anybody. I will live by what God has blessed with me. Even if I cannot afford what the people are affording because a man's life does not consist of the abundance of the things he has. It doesn't consist of the possession he has. A man came to meet Jesus, a young rich man. He said, how can I gain eternal life? And he said, do you obey the command? He said, I've obeyed. He said, there's only one thing. Go and sell everything. When he, saw, when he said it, the man went away sorrowful. And Peter looked at you and said, we have left everything. And Jesus said, those who have left everything, father and mother, with this word, get more. But he now added with persecution. And you know what he now said? Eternal life. The man came asking for how to enter eternal life. He went away not having eternal life. And Jesus told him how to get, told his disciples how to enter eternal life. Don't allow possessions get you. That's why in the Feast of Tabernacles, they tell them to, to stay in sukkah. That means that to stay in, hot, in tents outside their building. The tent will be just enough to protect them, but at night, through the tent, they can see the stars and the moon. Why? He wanted them to reflect on when they were in the wilderness that they had little possessions. If you are not careful, the more you have, the more the possession grabs you. It happens to anybody. Number five, promises on on marriage. You'll be married. For those of you not married, you'll be married. He said, but I'm getting old. Verse what, chapter what? (laughs) Verse what, chapter what? That's why some people would say, I, I want to be a billionaire by 30. My brother, you will steal. <laughs> uh, you don't even have inheritance. Your father is very poor. Your generation, they have never tested one million before. Then you say, you say at 30, humble yourself. Humble yourself. You don't have inheritance. It takes years to build it. And you build it little by little with peace of mind. But you'll be hardworking. But who will bring the increase is God. But let's look at your marriage. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him 
a helper comparable to him. Genesis 2 verse 21 to 25. This is God saying, it's not you. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. Then the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. He is the one that brought her. But he's not the one that chose. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become they shall become one flesh and they were both naked and the man and his wife and we are not ashamed. He brought him. Listen, let me tell you, no matter how old you are, if God has put in your heart you'll be married, you'll be married. The only thing is that stand on the promise, kneel on the promise. Don't use another hand and means to go and get it. You have you have a, a, a sexual drive, you'll be married. You are not are you the one that give yourself sexual drive? Oh sorry, sex drive. The way you are looking at me, you don't have sex drive. You see, you see, you see all, all these people. It's a gift. If you have sex drive, do like this. Do like this. Say, do like this. Say, I embrace my sex drive. Say it one more time. Say, I embrace my sex drive. It's a gift to me. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for my sex drive. I love it. I thank you for it. Shout a big hallelujah. You see, the sex drive kicks in to, to teenage age. In those days, they get married at 14. Because the mortality rate in the time of Jesus was 32 years. Jesus fulfilled his number of days, 33 and a half. So now, because their, their, their mortality is short, 14 to 32, how many years? Be careful you marry now because the mortality rate is long. 84, 80, 90. You see how God is saving you sometimes. You see how God is saving you. You see, Ozibo, Ozibo, I must marry. Ozibo, Ozibo, I must marry. God is saying, no, I, 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 I'm bringing the woman to you. I'm bringing the woman to you. <laughs> I'm bringing the woman to you but I must tell you it says it's not good for man to be alone this age it's not good for man to be lonely there is divine alliance for marriage marriage is not to satisfy your sex drive sex drive was put there by God so that you can reproduce I have a dog now that doesn't allow I want that, uh, made dog to sleep with I don't know what's wrong with that dog Maybe I should start praying. Pray for the, my dog. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Listen. If God has put in your heart, it made some to be union because of the gospel. There's the gift of singleness. There are people that were not supposed to marry. Some people are saying, Pastor, don't go there. Some people say, God forbid. Hey, it's for you, it's God forbid. But for others, it's not. They don't have sex drive. Is there, is there, is there, is there any person that doesn't have sex drive? Yes. They force them to marry now. They are tired of the marriage. The man say, I'm going to say, thank God. The woman say, I'm going to say, I, 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 I thank God for my life, oh. Yes. 
there are people. But if you are not married, understand that God has, God is a bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. Stand on the promise. It doesn't matter whether your brothers and your sisters are getting married. Be happy for them. Don't be jealous. Because God will not take somebody's blessings and give you. Lift up your voice, say, I'll be married. For those of you not married. They, listen, eh? If a woman can get married at 64, 64, first year, first marriage. He said, Pastor, I don't want to be like that. I didn't say you'll be like that. I just, I'm just trying to tell you. Because sometimes, when we share testimony, we say, Pastor, mm, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. I didn't say you will be the, 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 the same. <laughs> but what do you really need in marriage? Is it not peace of mind? Huh? It's peace of mind. <laughs> it's peace of mind. It's not that you want to show my wedding picture. All kinds, all kinds I see these days. You are using your pre-wedding picture to, to pepper people. Listen. You will only put pepper in your eye. Leave those people alone. Face your this thing. And listen, for those of you who are married, stand on the promises for those who are not married. That's what I'm telling you. Stand on the promises. My sister is not married. People stood on the promise. Somebody, stand on the promise. And don't, don't, ever, don't ever think that because you are married, you are wiser than those that don't know, are not married. Don't think, uh, my, my sister, foolishness. I'm telling you, that girl that is not married can tell you what you are missing. Why your husband is not running after you again. Yes, 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 yes. You, 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 you don't see my picking name, call me. I'll be your mate. Nah. When you get married, you tell your sister. You ask, you say, Lord, I'm standing on behalf of my sister. She will get married. Why? You need another person to, to go with you in marriage. Yes. Number two promise, number six promise, the promise of childbirth. You have your own children. Promises on childbirth. You have your children. If you need more, you'll get more. <laughs> Some people say, um. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I'm wondering, there was one time in the, in the middle 80s that there was so much austerity measure. And people were born then. If you were born 1983, raise up your hand. 84. 85. You are the, you are the austerity people. It's <laughs> yes, that's why we should line, line up for essential commodities. You were born that period. Your parents had faith to get married. <laughs> or else would have had a gap of no generation. Say, eh? Nobody born 1980-something. Nobody. <laughs> Voice of Freedom here was one of the places, the back of the, that hall, was the place they were selling essential commodities in GRA. What's essential commodity? Should I tell you? Milk. Sugar. <laughs> the basic things of life became essential. And some of you were born there. When you get home, tell your mother, thank you. Hebrews 11, 11. <laughs> By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Listen, when you are married, God sometimes will just show you in a dream, this is your child. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. In Genesis 1, 28, it's there. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply multiplication in your body. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Psalm 113 verse 9. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. Stand on these promises. Stand on these promises. He said you are 45. How old was Sarah? How old was Sarah? He says, those days, oh, 
verse what chapter what? You know, sometimes we use our brain to calculate the word of God as adults. A child does not cal- If you want to teach children how to hear God, very easy. Only adults. <laughs> they will tell you, it's my mind though. This thing I'm saying now, I don't know whether it's God, it's my mind. A child will just tell you, this is what the Lord said I should tell you, then go and play again. They believe more than we do. You will have your children. And you that have children, look at those that do not have. And say, I stand in the gap with you. I stand in the gap with you. It's not a time when you are going through crisis. It's not a time to remove yourself. When somebody is doing baby dedication, go there be the first to be there. When they are doing the be the first to be there. They can mock you. Do they know your God? Don't judge your life by the, by, by, by the instability of men. Today they will say one thing, tomorrow they will say one thing, another thing. Yesterday they are tickled, today they are, they are, they are batified, tomorrow they are obedient. So they are just jumping up and down everything. Man, man, the, the what? listen, listen, listen. The best of man still has weaknesses. They still have weaknesses. Say, oh, you are, listen, stand in the promise. I remember when we were going through that. The Lord opened my eyes to see Genesis 26. He said, and Isaac prayed for his wife. And Isaac prayed for his wife. And his wife gave birth. And Isaac prayed for his wife. I stood on that. And Isaac prayed for his wife. Lay your hands on your wife. Pray for her. This is not the time to say, I want to go and, go, 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 go and, go and get outside. You will get trouble. You will get, you give birth to Ishmael. That will cause problem for the rest of your life. He said, my friends are telling me that, 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 I, I, I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Your friends. Your friends tomorrow I will tell you, say, <laughs> you the friends of, the friends of uh, a man. They say he should pursue, he should kill Mordecai. When he came back and told them, they now changed their mind. He said, if, he, if what's happening now, that man is, <laughs> you'll be the one that will die. <laughs> His friends, friends, that, that, friends that, that don't know their left from their right, telling you, advising you on what, advising you against the knowledge of God. Against the knowledge of God. A woman after 10 years giving birth today. Her friend who is a man, he said every day, tell your husband thank you. He said for me, I can't even stay for two years. Is a man advising a girl, a lady. And lastly, promises on spiritual birth. You can't give birth only physically. God counts on you to give birth spiritually. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 6 to 8, the disciples of Jesus was telling him, you see, you, you know what baffles me about these disciples? I, I don't think I will be like them. Jesus resurrected. They didn't come to ask him, <laughs> did you see devil? How does I be? <laughs> Maybe Jesus would have started a ministry back from the death ministry. They didn't ask. Look at what they are asking. They are asking how to change the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. It said, but. It says, so. When they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you, in this, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? In other words, are you going to bring a military invasion? Let's take over the kingdom now from Rome. They still did not get it after three and a half years. He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the dates the Lord has said by his own authority. It's not about the second time. It's not about, it's, people talk, it's about the second time, the, the second coming. No, that's not what Jesus was addressing. He was saying, whether he will put them down or he will lift them or, or, or we take them away, it's a different ball game. Or he will leave them there. It's God's authority. Verse 8. He said, but you will receive power. 
when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the world. In other words, God doesn't want you to, to, to take over. He wants you to infiltrate. To infiltrate. It was a small girl that directed Naaman to, uh, to, to, to his healing. Infiltrate. You know, most times we as Christians believe that we should take over political position. Then when we take over political position, then things will happen, we will not install Christian values. Listen, God has not called you to legislate morality in the world. He has called you to be an example and a witness. That's why some of us, we cannot witness in the, in the marketplace when you see somebody taking a deco. <laughs> you feel, you feel, <laughs> you say, what am I doing with this person? This, this sinner. This sinner. I'm not the one to clean the morality of the world. I don't have. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. You shall receive power. Acts, Luke chapter 10 verse 1 to 2. Jesus was sending them to the world. To the world. He said, after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful. This is what Jesus is saying. The harvest is plentiful. I've heard people say, everybody in Benin is born again. Who told you? Some people are born again by lips. How do you measure the effectiveness of a church? Two ways. Conversion and discipleship. Conversion and discipleship. Conversion and discipleship. It's not about the crowd or the money. When people are properly converted and they are discipled, the money will come in. No, no, the, the money will come. The person that is a disciple knows that his pocket is not for him. It's only the one that is struggling, half Christian, half uh, uh, Ogun worshiper, half, uh, uh, this, uh, half uh, uh, because we are, we are babying them. Just, just, say, just, just, say, just, say, just say the sinner's prayer, which I've never seen in the Bible. Neither am I saying it's bad. But really in our heart, we are not converted. We are not discipled. We are not followers of Christ. And, some, and, and sometimes, you know, you, know, you, you need to repent every, every day. Because there are some areas of your life that is not under the lordship of Jesus. Yes. There are areas of your life. When they say that thing, you tell them, don't go near there. Don't go near there. <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> But every day, he said, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send that workers into his harvest field. We need people today who will go into the harvest field. And can I say something to you? Your workplace is a harvest field. You don't need anywhere anymore. Your workplace, the people you meet in the line of business, your harvest field. How you behave and how your weakness will be about whether you are going to disciple them. Listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm for people getting jobs and getting money. And get say, Pastor does not want us to prosper. I want you to prosper, on, but which cost? Why, does, why will God give you money if you don't want to have spiritual children? So that you spend it on your lust? Because the more you have money without where to put it in, as dictated by God, the more the spirit of mammon will come. You start having sexual living. The promises of spiritual birth. Firm builders. When I mean firm builders, I'm talking to you individually. Where are your spiritual children? Who do you call every day to follow up? Who, do you, who, do, who have you invited into a life group? This is the year of maturity. Imagine that you give birth to a child 25 years, 30 years. It's not thinking of marriage. How will you feel? I remember those days my son was telling my wife, I don't want to marry. He said, eh? Eh? <laughs> he has not even gotten to the stage we say you should marry. He's just saying it. I don't want to marry. Eh? No, say it again. She will rub the mouth. Hear me? Do you know what I have discovered? In the kingdom, in the family of God, many of you don't want to take leadership position. You don't want to be responsible for people's lives. How can you grow in the faith? How can you grow in the faith? You know, you, you, you like to stand on the promise of finances. I will be rich. I will not be poor. 
I am the head and not the tail. I am on top and not beneath. Calm down. I'm protected. Riches, the, the, the riches of the kingdom are mine. Where are your children? Where are your children? Where are your children? The vice is in the world today. You are blaming government. God did not call government for it. If my people who are called by my name. Those boys around you that are smoking. God is counting on you. You can say bad parenting. <laughs> the guy just only was, was heavy that night. So they had a one night stand and they gave birth to a child. Not prepared to be a father. But God has trained you to be a father around that child. And God is giving you finances, money to do that. But you are telling me, not concern me. He sent them two by two. And when he gave them the strategy of how to disciple or to win it, when I look at Jehovah's Witness, I see it in them. A Jehovah's Witness person will not come to you and say, invite you to his church. No. He will stay with you. He can stay with you for two years. Every day will be coming. He will be calling you. He's mentoring you in your house. That's Luke chapter 10. He said, when you get to the house, say shalom. Stay with them. Can we stay with a boy for five years? And every day, with all his bad character, he will even dupe you. <laughs> Jesus stayed with 12 teenagers. And when he was arrested, all of them ran away. But when he came back, they became world changers. Today I see believers. Hey, don't come to my house. Oh. I will mentor you from afar. Let me tell you about discipleship that we have lost taste of. Discipleship, you can never disciple people by putting them in a class. Effectively. That's why the church is, 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 is weak in their discipleship. Very weak. Because we think that when we put them in a class, teach them Bible, teach them Bible, load their brain, load their this thing, and not teach them, and not put them in a place to practice. They cannot. Listen, no, some people cannot know what marriage is in a class. They go, no marriage is they will know when ma what marriage is if they come and live with you and your husband. They will know what marriage is when they see you in church and at home. When they see you in the shopping mall and at home and everywhere and where you are, that's how they will know. That's because, what, because in their own family, they have never seen a man and a woman live well. Now we have so many shattered marriages in church and we are complaining with the word of God. No! The discipleship and the mentoring is not there. They have not come to test your life. What you are enjoying with your husband and your wife. They should know sometimes that two of you have some heated fellowship but the heated fellowship will lead to more close then they will now know. Because in their home, they have seen people, their father and their mother have heated fellowship. It's fight all the way. It's blowing of eye. It's, it's, it's grabbing of the testicles. It's they have seen it. And sometimes when these people are around you, they have bad character. Why would they not have? You think they are clean? No, they are not. They are not too. All of you, as I see you here, hmm. It's only when I see your post sometimes and I see the way you answer. Sometimes I will call some people. You say, eh, who is this? Eh? <laughs> Maybe then they just change their phone. My number did not show. Eh, who be this? <laughs> I say, work studio. <laughs> <laughs> then when, when I say, I, I'm the one, my name is Benson. He goes, hey, Papa. <laughs> so... <laughs> Sorry, sorry. So I don't know saying are you. That must you know I'm the one to be nice? You mustn't know you. You must you know I'm the one to honor people. No, I'm not the one. Lift up your listen, 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 listen. You must have spiritual children. This is the year of maturity. Where's your life group? When do you go for evangelism? When do you look for the lost? When do you pray for the lost? It's a promise. 
He said, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. The reason Osai Waipo are not maturing in their faith is that they have not given birth. They are not looking out for others. People are not following them. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Can you tell people to follow you as you follow Christ? He said, no, follow me. Listen, you know why I'm talking to you like this, eh? You see, my son is in the media. He's going to copy we. Yeah, he's going to copy Bless Be. And if you don't raise him right, your own children will copy him. And the question you should ask yourself, is your life worth copying? Because we don't, look, we don't see church, as, we see church as church, as an institution. We don't see it as family. There are some things I can't tell my son now. He will think because I'm his daddy. That I want to, I want to whine him. But there are some things Optimists can tell him. What if optimist is not optimistic? Then he passes straight to him. Then optimist has a son. Adu madu body. Where's your life group? Who are you discipling in this church? Who are you discipling out there? You get sickness for, but you say, Pastor, not pray. You say, they're not see road for me. They not look, they not look well for me. They not post my picture. They not pray for me. Only you. Only you. Only you. Disciples. Who are your spiritual children? So every day I call you, bless me. Every day I call you, we. Every day I call you, Ikena. Every day I call you, it's because of the next generation. Let people see that you have money and God is blessing you and you are still burning for God. Today, our young people are in church because the one outside who has money is showing them the way without God. Meanwhile, God blessed you in church. They're not they see you for church again. When they ask you, say, I'm busy. Mm, I'm busy. Pastor, you are the one that they prophesied it. You prophesied it. Lord, when, when people start talking like that, I go shift back. Do you know what will happen if my son sees you on Wednesday service seated? He sees a guy man. Who knows what's up? Who knows the things? Who is, who, is, who is trendy, hot, and leaning down for God? I don't need to tell him. Discipleship is no longer strong in church because God blesses you. You're called a good guy. Hey, mama. Shalom, mama. He said, it's, it, it, it's not the blessed be of before. It's not, it's not the band of before. Man. <laughs> Rise up on your feet. 